Hello and welcome back to Sheaf Math. In today's lesson, you are going to learn how to write linear equations from an XY table. So let's take a look at an XY table, what it is. And so it's where you have uh, X and Y and, um, and you have about, here we have five points. Our X's go by ones, which is a good thing. We'll talk about that later, zero, one, two, three, four. And the Y's um, have a certain rate that they're going by. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the generic form of the slope-intercept equation. Okay, and y equals mx plus b. The m is the slope and the b is the y-intercept. So if we can find the slope and the y-intercept, then we're able to create that equation. So we are going to find the slope and the y-intercept. Now the slope is the constant rate of change that the y is moving. It's either going to go up or down at a constant rate. And this one happens to be going up by 3 as x increases by 1. And so that is our slope. It's a 3. Now the y-intercept, that is the 0 term. Okay, We call this the 0 term when x equals 0, whatever y equals, that's where the line goes through the y-axis, known as the y-intercept. So negative 1 is our y-intercept. And so all we do is put 3 in for m negative 1 in for b, and we have our equation. And so if you wanted to find any value of y for any number of x, you could just plug it into there and you would get your answer. Now we're going to keep doing a few more examples and they're going to progressively get harder, and so uh, hang on. So we, uh, we start with our generic form again, and we need to find our slope and y-intercept. So this one looks pretty easy. It looks like it's going up by twos. So that's an easy slope to find. The x's are going up by one, one, two, three, four. So that's good. So that is our slope. Now, the y-intercept, we don't have a zero term here. So how are we going to find the y-intercept? Well, we're going to have to find the, what the zero term is. And so since we have uh, one, two, three, four, and zero is just one uh, below that, uh, I'm going to put a zero above the x and y here. And uh, since it's going up by 2 each time, if we were to go backwards, then we would subtract 2 to get 3. And 3 would be our y-intercept. And if you look at that, it makes a lot of sense. It's going up by 2 each time all the way from 0. So we put 2 in for m, 3 in for y, or for the b, and uh, we, got, we have our equation. Okay, let's take a look at this one. Now, I put this one in here because this one kind of tricks students sometimes. So, we go about the same method. We're going to find the slope and the y-intercept. And the slope looks pretty easy to find. It's going up by 5. That's not a big deal. So, we found our slope. Now, the zero term is our y-intercept. And so, some students just put the first number there, that 7 there, by mistake. But it's actually the zero term, whatever zero equal um, or the zero term is, that's the y-intercept. And so this happens to be 17, so that's our b. So we put those in there, y equals 5x plus 17. Okay? All right, now we have something a little different. So as we do our same method, we are looking at our slope, and it looks like it's going up by 6, but if you didn't notice it, we have a little different problem here. If you look at the x's, they're not going up by 1. They're going by 2's. So the slope is the rate of change for every time x goes up 1. So what happens if it's going up by 2? Then they're actually, if we were to expand this xy table, you could actually fit the 5 term in there in 23. And so looking at those three y's, what is the slope actually? Well, it's going up by 3, okay? And so you can mathematically do it by taking 6 and dividing it by the two um, numbers that it's going up by, okay? And so there is our slope. So always be careful and look at that x. Is it going up by 1s? All right, the y-intercept. Well, we don't have the zero term, and so we're going to have to find it. So since we start at 4 here, and our slope is 3, then we're going to have to go backwards 4 times to get to 0. So we're going to subtract 3 from 20 uh, 4 times. And so we end up getting 
8, okay? So 0, 8 is the uh, y-intercept, so 8 is our b. We put those in there, and we have our y, our, sorry, our, uh, our equation. Okay, now I've got some more tricky ones for you, okay? Now, what makes this one tricky? Well, the slope is pretty uh, easy to find, right? Six, and if you look at the x's, they're going up by one. So that's pretty easy. The, the y-intercept, though, is zero. And so the only reason I put this one in here is because students sometimes don't know what to do with the zero and the b. Well, if b is zero, you don't even put it. You'll just leave it as y equals six x. So any time that you have an equation that looks like this, where there's no y-intercept or b after the x, then you know that it's going to go through 0 on the y-axis. Okay, sometimes they get real tough as far as negatives, um, and so you're going to have to be very careful. And so this is where the actual method is going to help you out. Okay, now, uh, some people have a hard time seeing the uh, rate of change when it's dealing with negatives. So if you're not sure what it is, you're going to go back to your arithmetic sequence and you're going to find the common difference. In other words, you're going to take any number, negative 17 will do, and we're going to subtract the one before it, negative 11. So negative 17 minus a negative 11 is a negative 6. Okay, so what that means is that this particular table is going down by 6 each time. And if you look at it, it makes sense. It's getting more negative and higher, or more negative, more negative, uh, as those sixes keep adding. So that is our slope. Now, to find the zero term, uh, we have to go from three all the way back to zero. And so since our rate of change is minus six, then we're going to add six in reverse. So we're going to add six three times to get our zero term. And that turns out to be positive seven. Okay. And so we put those numbers in our equation, and we've got it. And there you have it. You learned how to write linear equations from an XY table. So I hope that this helped you. Um, if you need to watch it again, I understand. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.